These boxes contain my entire vintage Star Wars figure collection. Join me as we go through the collection and see what needs to be upgraded. Welcome back. Now here we are with all my vintage Star Wars figures. Now I'm going to go through the collection and determine which figures need to be upgraded because I do want my collection, once it's displayed, to be as perfect as possible within budget obviously. So I'm going to go through each figure and determine whether it's worth keeping or whether it needs to be replaced. Now in order to keep the time for this video down, I'll do it in four parts. This is the first part obviously, we'll be looking at figures relating to the first Star Wars movie. So without further ado, let's take a look at the figures relating to Star Wars. So, Star Wars, the very first movie. These figures fit into this carry case and this here box. Now, in order to give you a much more detailed look, I'm going to fire up the overhead camera and we'll have a little notepad handy to take notes of which figures are staying and which figures will need to be upgraded. So without further ado, let's take a look at the figures. So to start things out, this was the case I bought filled with figures. In fact, I did buy the first 21 as a complete set and they did come in this case. Now the case itself was in pretty bad shape. There appears to be like a cigarette burn here. I think I'm going to get rid of this case. If I can get a few bucks for it, so be it. Um, I'm not going to display this. I'm not going to use it once the figures are on display. So this can go at some point. But inside, so we have the top layer and ah, that's the custom look I made a few years back. Anyway, let's go through these. So this is my Boba Fett. This is actually in pretty decent condition. Uh, this is one of the figures that I'm not particularly bothered about because thanks to Hasbro's retro collection, I do have a number of minty fresh Boba Fetts. We'll look at those shortly, but this one is fine. No need to upgrade this. And when it comes to my display, I would like to have as many genuine vintage as possible. And this one I think is perfectly worthy of being on display. Although there does seem to be some green paint overspill on his belt, not that big of a deal. So Boba Fett is good. My custom look, X-Wing pilot. This one looks great, I think. Um, obviously a case of taking an X-Wing pilot look the original look and swapping the heads. And this was, I think, a vintage collection helmet. And I actually split his uh, joined hand in order to fit the strap through. So it holds on to that perfectly. I do like this. And this is actually a very nice looking head. Um, I did, of course, sell the headless body at some point. But yeah, I'm very happy with this. So that's my custom. This is the actual look x-wing with his blaster again this one looks to be in pretty good condition wow ironically i just dropped his blaster having just reissued a video of mine showing how this figure had a great hand for holding the blaster but anyway look x-wing pilot the white is white there's no real paint scuffs happy to keep this one uh, power droid um he does have his rubber antenna that's good um, the stickers are all there, it hasn't come off I don't think, that's good, and nice clicky legs, yep, uh, it could be argued the antenna's slightly off kilter, but I'm not going to nitpick on that, nope, this is good, that can stay, R5-D4, now this one is interesting, obviously this is entirely vintage, and as such, the legs are slightly yellowed. The sticker has obviously sort of got a bit yellow over time. Uh, it still clicks quite nicely. I mean, in terms of display, it looks good, but this is another figure I do have a slightly better version of that we'll get to very soon. So this one can stay, although this may not be the one that ends up on display in my collection. Hammerhead, this one to me looks perfectly okay. There's not a lot can really go wrong with this. I think sometimes the body can show signs of yellowing, but this one doesn't appear to be that way. Uh, the eyes are 
reasonably well painted. Um, head is stiff enough. This one tends to be prone to get getting quite a loose head. This one is okay, so hammer head, perfectly fine. Walrus man, let's see. Yeah, this one looks perfect as well. Absolutely nothing wrong with this as far as I can see. So yeah, he's good to stay. Death Star Droid. Now, this is one that uh, typically does not survive the decades well. And whilst mine at first glance does look quite good, uh, closer inspection does show some of the black uh, paint wearing off and he's definitely lost his sheen. Um, his limbs are reasonably stiff, which is good. However, again, stay tuned because I do have an alternative for this one, but as it is, um, it's not too bad, but as I say, keep watching. Greedo, um, this one looks pretty good actually. Yep, very happy with this. Absolutely no reason to go looking to replace Greedo here, so he's staying. And Snaggletooth, again, this one looks pretty fresh. Uh, it's, uh, Claws are nicely painted. Still got the emblem on his belt that's there. Uh, yep, this one is perfectly good. This one can stay. Now this, interestingly enough, is an extra Tuscan Raider. And initially I was going to sell this, but then having received the Stan Solo Bantha, that obviously needs someone to ride it. And that will be this guy here. And this one is, believe it or not, is slightly different to the other one I have in the tray below, whereby this one has much darker paint. We'll soon see the other one, which has, a, I think it's got a lighter paint scheme for the brown. But yeah, this one looks great, got his stick. So this one will be riding on top of the band. Foot. I don't know why I had that in a bag, but there we go. And oh, here's something that will upset some people. Uh, these, I think, are reproduction telescoping or double telescoping lightsabers. Uh, I forgot I had these actually. Um, I suppose in theory I could display my retro collection with these double telescoping blasters. Blasters? Double telescoping lightsabers. Man, these are well packed. Let me see. I'll just take a look at one of them. Let's take a look at the Vader's. So these um, obviously not genuine articles, but looks perfectly okay to me. Um, yeah, I think I'll display some of my figures with these. Um, yeah, why, why, why spend thousands when this looks just as good? So yeah, that this concludes the top tray. If I can get this back in. So now we have to go and remove this upper tray to expose, it should be the first 12. So starting down here, we have a cloth cape Jawa, and the cape is in really good condition. It's as you would expect, the hands, slight paint loss there, but not a big deal. And this is a reproduction vinyl cape, which as it turns out, I don't actually need this, as we'll see very soon, but this Jawa in this condition, perfectly fine. Here's the Tuscan Raider I was mentioning. So just to do a side by side, you can see the difference in the, the brown paint that was used, or I hope you can, hope it's coming through on camera. This one is much darker, but this was the one that came with the set I bought. So I think I'm gonna have this one on display there's his gaffy stick. I have this one on display and the other one riding the Bantha. This is C-3PO and he does look rather nice actually. Very shiny, no sort of dullness at all. And the limbs are quite stiff, very stiff actually. This is a perfect example of the first C-3PO, so extremely happy with this. Now this is one that I've, it's bothered me since I got it. Now I don't know how well this is coming through on camera, but there is slight yellowing on his body here. Um, 
really it's only affecting the sort of one side of it. So for that reason, I think I may have to upgrade this fellow here. Aside from that, his paint is perfect. Absolutely no rubs at all. Even the brim of his helmet is fine. So this is one that I'm going to take a note of this. So that was Death Squad Commander. Um, that needs to get replaced, I think. Uh, am I being nitpicky? Let me know in the comments. But just when I look at it, I, I do see that slight yellowing that I'm not that happy with. So here we have Ben Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, his lightsaber is slightly crooked on that thin tip, but it's not necessarily that big of a deal and in addition to those double telescoping sabers I do have a ton of repro weapons so if need be I can replace that with a nicer looking one but all in all the figure itself nice paint um, gray hair cape is good fine R2D2 now this one is a bit disappointing um, obviously all 100% original the dome is slightly dull slightly yellowing on the legs and the sticker has definitely seen slightly better days um all in all it's not bad um i do have an alternative for this we'll see shortly but i think i may look to upgrade r2 because it's just not shiny enough and funnily enough someone can let me know in the comments what happened to the proposed box of the remaining six figures in retro collection that Hasbro previewed sometime last year because that would actually take care of Death Squad Commander and R2-D2 but it's all gone very quiet on that front so if anyone knows please do uh, let me know. Darth Vader um, can't really see any fault with this one. Um, the lightsaber is not at all bad actually pretty straight and the cape is good um yeah very good happy with that princess leia for this to be you know four decades plus it's in pretty good condition um obviously compared to the retro collection it's not quite as bright and vibrant but the paint is good um the gown is good the blaster is good oh slight split there um I'm not going to be moving the arms too much anyway. Um, this one is good enough to keep. Um, as I said, I do have the brighter, whiter retro collection we'll look at soon. Stormtrooper, this one, uh, you can see the body is definitely yellowed uh, in comparison to the limbs. But uh, Stormtroopers are not something I am lacking, as we'll see soon. So... Um, and this one n never held his blaster straight. Um, you have to sort of angle it down. Um, the question is, do I want to get a genuine white vintage for the display or just put in one of my replacements? We'll consider that. The Luke Skywalker. Now, this one did not come with the 21 figures I bought in a lot. I actually bought this one uh, one of the first videos in All Things 80s was a comparison of this, the Retro Collection, the 1995 reissue, and the uh, Jumbo from Gentle Giant. I think this one was like 150 bucks or something, but it was absolutely perfect. Still is. I'm very happy with this. And the fact that it was the blonde-haired version, which is the same one I had as a kid, made the decision to get hold of this or spend that much money a lot easier. So this one is perfect, keeping that. Han Solo, small head, of course, with his blaster. Now, interestingly enough, um, the Vetra Collection did the large head, so I'm not going to track down a large head Han, but this one, the red is perfect, the sleeves are nice and white, shirt is good. Um, yep, perfect there. Uh, Chewbacca. Another one that is perfect. Absolutely nothing wrong with this. Body and limbs are fairly similar colour, so there's none of that sort of green limb stuff going on here. Perfect. So, from looking at this collector's case, in all reality, Death Squad Commander 
and possibly R2-D2 will need to potentially be replaced. But let's keep going and look at the other figures I have relating to the first Star Wars movie. So having just gone through the tray of originals, here are the retro collections. So these are all been opened. I've already done a video of these years ago. So they've got a perfect Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker. There's just something odd about his face though. So I'm thinking, I do have a vintage land speeder. I'm thinking I'm gonna use this look inside the land speeder. So that's not that big of a deal. The big head Han Solo, this one does look good. And potentially this might go side by side with my small head Han in the display. Chewbacca, uh, the one I have is perfect. So I can find another uh, use for him in a display of sorts. A very nice bright white Princess Leia. So potentially she could take the place of the original in the display. And last of all, we have Grand Moff Tarkin, a figure that was never made, but very much deserves to be part of a vintage Star Wars figure collection. Now, there's still more, stay tuned. Now, I did mention that I wasn't overly concerned about having a slightly yellowed Stormtrooper. The reason being, I have quite a lot of minty fresh white Stormtroopers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. But wait, there's more. So this will be the part where some people cringe in disgust, but good old Stan Solo has added to the collection. So Stormtroopers, we had, I think it was 10 I just showed you there. Here is 11. And just to show you how good these do look, um, absolutely perfect. And so white, so fresh looking. So that's, I think, number 11. Uh, there should be more here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Uh, there's 12. So we've got 12 minty white stormtroopers. And my intention was to have some sort of diorama with, you know, Vader, the Emperor and the Royal Guards. And that's why I'm really annoyed that the Jedi Retro Collection didn't give us the Emperor's Royal Guard because that would have been a perfect army builder. But there you go. Now, Jawas, vinyl capes. We have Two of them here, um, again, reproduction, but does not bother me in the slightest. And I'm thinking I may put one next to the cloth caped Jawa in the main display and possibly use another one uh, with the Bantha. So we got a couple of these final cape Jawas, very nice. Um, ah. Death Star droid. So as I said earlier, mine has seen better days, unlike this one, which is absolutely gleaming. And the black is all present and correct. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, an absolute godsend getting this because unless you're prepared to spend really big money, it is not easy to find a Death Star droid as nice as this. And now I think we're almost getting on to figures that were never originally made. Ah, reproduction R5-D4. So as I said, mine was a bit yellow looking. Whereas this one, as you can see, very nice, very white and clicky clicky. Not quite as loud, but it does click. Uh, absolutely gleaming white. So this one I think will go on my main display and the original one will go probably alongside the land speeder. So now, ah, another reproduction to upset people and more, uh, more repro weapons. These are fantastic, aren't they? You know, why, why spend hundreds when you can simply use something like this? It looks just as good. But anyway, blue snaggletooth. This I think was one of the first ones I bought because obviously it wasn't a figure that I was aware of as a kid, but 
I did want it for my collection and again another of these figures that the real ones do suffer from a lot of scuffed feet this one is absolutely perfect uh, does it bother me that it's not real absolutely no absolutely not this is exactly what I'm looking for in my collection a nice beautiful example so so glad to have this one so now we're getting into the uh, made especially by Stan Solo. So this is the, I think it's called it the Yavin Ceremony C-3PO and R2-D2. And I did think I could have used this R2-D2 in the main display, but then that would leave this C-3PO on his own. So look at how stunning that is. In fact, I may have to see if he's still selling these and get one of these, in fact, unless, of course, Hasbro do come through with that box of the remaining first 12 figures in retro collection. But this, of course, C-3PO, a real sort of d deeper bronze color with the silver leg and R2-D2 absolutely shining away there. Beautiful. Both these figures are stunning, actually. So these will, you know, stand together on the display. So I'll have the original C-3PO that I have just shown you that was very clean and bright. I'll do something about getting a nicer R2, but these will be the Yavin ceremony figures, so I'm very happy indeed with these. Uh, this one shouldn't actually be here. This is from Empire Strikes Back. Why is he in this box? Away you go. And finally, Garandon, a figure that was never made, should have been, but this is it. This is a great looking figure really is and of course the classic sort of 70s vinyl cape and i believe that's the same communicator as the cloud car pilot but done in black great looking figure so that concludes a look at my figures from star wars and to be honest it's all looking pretty good really it's just death squad commander and possibly tracking down another r2d2 but that will do it for the star wars figures I hope you enjoyed that look there at my Star Wars figures. Of course, they're all Star Wars figures, but I am, of course, referring to the figures relating to the movie Star Wars. Now, please let me know in the comments if you agree with my belief that certain figures did need upgraded. And what do you think of the additions to that line that came courtesy of Stan Solo? So, as I said, this is part one. There'll be a further three parts, maybe even four, who knows? looking at my entire collection and doing the exact same thing, going through piece by piece to try and determine which figures can be upgraded. So thank you for watching this and sticking by. Please leave a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed. Please share the video and stay tuned for more videos from all things 80s.